Hello, this is Victor. I'm here with a new tutorial and in the next tutorial we are going to explain how to paint this um, scabbing from the Ashing clan uh, in the colors well, in a yeah how to how I'm painting them in the color of my of my warband, okay? So it's a little bit different, but it's going to be on this color scheme that you have here. So dark blue and black combination. Um, so we are going to start with the base and then to start on the base we are going to start using uh, this one okay with charger gray on the base so we are going to do um, different layers of washers and weatherings on the base uh, to achieve this greenish color that you can see as well on this one okay so we are going to look for this type of look so I'm going to apply First, lift charger gray over all the stones, and I will exclude this type of um, debris or dirtiness we have there that we want to cover almost the whole base. Okay, so I will do that, then I will wait at this device. And I'm back for the next step. Once the previous layer has dried, now we are going to apply BLT and Green over the stones to give a green filter. Okay. We do it like that. And again, we are going to wait this device before doing the next step. So I keep doing that and I wait this device. Okay, this hole looks like after the green shading. Next step, I'm going to use Iron Breaker and I'm going to do, no, I don't know if I still know, sorry, this one Iron Breaker and I'm going to do the this grid there Like that. Now let's do and this. Okay, this is done. I'm going to use um goth um no goth thing um, what's it called this one Gorgunta four okay and we are going to apply it on these stones there or sand or debris And I'm going to use that well on this thing here because this seems that looks like the smoke, the broken smoke bomb or smoke ball or smoke orb. So I'm imagining that this, for example, inside of uh, clay ball and then when you break it you do the reaction the smoke I don't know I'm just guessing who knows how the sk 
having technologies working good next I'm going to use um, Basil silicone gray and I'm going to paint the smoke okay later on we are going to work on the smoke to make all this highlights is just first I'm just applying this as a base you can see I, I dilute it quite a lot not to make it too dark So I can see very nicely how this smoke is cool and then I can work on the highlights very easily. Much. Just be careful that it's not happen that you don't accumulate too much in some parts. If you see that, remove it. So we don't want. So now what I did is I clean my wall brush and I will remove some of the excess like that. Here as well. And here I'm missing a little bit, so I will put a little bit. But something like that should be good. We can add a little bit more at the bottom. But these are the stones, so we can add the brown, the brown there. And then I will wait that this dries. This is Igor Brown. Okay, so I will do brown here. Then I will with this device and then I will be back for the next step. How it looks like now that everything has dry. You can see the smoke. We will need to do some touches here and there. So, for example, here I will add a little bit of black just to redefine this part. Then I mix it with some grays. So, but we will need to work the smoke later on. I'm doing that because I don't like to see this. Okay, this is how we are going to work the smoke later on. But that's not matter. We are going to do this first. I'm going to finalize the base, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take Aquax Air Shade, and we are going to wash the base with Aquax Air Shade. Uh, as you can see, I leave this in purpose because there I want to put some um, green liquid, and yeah, I will do it after the wash. So we are going to apply that uh, everywhere. You want to kill a little bit the green shade and go more to the brown now, okay, to make it look beautiful. I will take a bigger brush. So. so let's take a big brush and we do this. Okay, because you want to here, if it's pulling a little bit, I don't care. Because at the end you want something that looks dirty, messy, and yeah, and the the Aguas air shade will do the work very nicely. Now we have done that. Okay, and again we wait at this device, and we are going to do we are ready to do the final details on the base. Okay, so I'm waiting at this device, and I'm back. To the final details and then we can go back we can start working on this cabin itself okay so this whole looks like no and next step what I'm going to do I'm going to add I'm going to use um, 
Los Zygor, no, the Gorgunta Brown. And we are going to apply it on the metal, okay? To give a more the sensation of of rust, okay? You want to thin it down a little bit in some parts. And you need to do everything. So just like that. You can have more, more tonality in one, more mm, darker in one part than others. And I waited this device. So while this is drying, we are going to work on this on the smoke. To work on the smoke, I have on my palette three colors. Okay, I have a mini stratum gray. I have Stonebird Moon Four. And downstone. Okay, and mainly, to be fair, I will use mainly no, and as well white. But I will use mainly first and mini stratum gray, and we'll start popping up all these things. And one color that they will add, they will need like an intermediate. I'm going to take. Gray sear and put a little bit of gray sear on my palette as well. Just shake it well, I have it. Well, it was not perfectly close. I will put some gray sear there on my palette. We want this smoke to look more white than more on the white than on the black. So let's start with this part here. You can see we are going to And here, for example, where the I'm going to use a downstone first, just where in the place where it fell. Keep working with grace here. Then you can even use a little bit of white if you want. And when I go back at the bottom, I'm going to use a mini stratum gray. I use again a mini stratum gray here. Okay. 
can. And the big ones, I even use some white, quite thin. So I will do like that. Okay. You can see how it starts to pop up. Then we can go back to the part where we miss. And we can keep adding some shades. Here I will go with administrator and again as I did in the other side I will use administrator at the bottom so to make it look more opaque. Okay, so I will keep working like that on the smoke and I'm back for the next step. Okay, so this is how the smoke looks like now. Okay, and I quite like it. Now we are going to work on the sewer and I'm going to use this one uh, Nurgling rod. We are going to put a bunch of these here. Like that. Okay. And now I'm going to use, I'm going to do a little bit of orange rust, and to do that I'm going to use this color, okay, 12 layer orange, we have it here, I take it like that, and what we want to do is, in the areas where I already did some rust before, I'm going to add a little bit more. Okay. This color is very good to the rust. It's very similar to the Rizal rust. And indeed it does a very nice. But you have to thin it down and play with the transparency of this one to create this orange. As you can see and I'm applying it mainly in crevices okay like that I will now do it more on the inside of the grid you want to go very transparent you don't want for example this is a little bit too orangey so what you can do now is I take clean brush and just remove it around I will put a little bit here on the corner and I think like that it's looking ru enough rust next I'm using scrap brown no that's cloud brown sorry this one and I'm going to I just highlight a little bit this here. 
you don't need to be regular, these are stones. So you can make it's, it's a very heavy dry brush. You can see I try to pointing in the area where I want to highlight. I don't want to do too much on that to be fair. And we can start with the rat now. So let's just start with the skin and I'm going for a pale skin. And the base I use for the pale skin is a contrast paint. It's um, dark oat flesh. And I'm going to apply it on all the skin parts. And if there is full, I will not take too much care now. I will go over the fur. Not completely, but I will not be too concerned if I go a little bit over the fur. If the fur is very small, I just go over it uh, without too much. So what you want to do is really to ensure that the skin is well covered and you don't want to be too dark so but later on we are going to highlight it so in that case we are going to put as well inside of the mouth in the mouth we can go heavier we want the inside of the mouth to look darker you can see I'm going to put it on all the parts where I, we have Expose the skin. I'm thinking he's not wearing any clothes at the top. So I'm going to do this all over the skin and I'm back once it's done and have to be a little bit dry of course. Okay, so I'm doing that and I'm back. Okay, so now we the skin is done, dry as well the sea wing here it's looking good and uh, now I'm going to use black templar and I'm going to do um, the cape the trousers and the belts almost everything okay I start with the cape okay so the trousers I will do in blue Okay, so I will do the cape and the, I will do as well, this armor plate. So I will do the cape, the belts and the bandages and I will do blue, will do blue for the trousers, that is the vibing color that I have on this, that blue. I'm going to do this you can see what I do is I, I try not to apply too thick so I'm okay if it's a little bit greyish so at the end you want to look a little bit like bleach black right not a new it's that is quite used and damaged cape. Okay. So I'm going to apply this here and the bandages for example I will do as well. So you want to do like that. Okay, so I'm going to do all these parts. I wait at this device and I'm back. Okay, so this whole after the black looks like I also put it on, on the weapons because uh, I like to put black where I will go with metallic and now I'm going to use Ultramarine's uh, blue, the contrast paint and we are going to do the trousers Okay, so we are going to apply this here Okay. I 
Sometimes I realize with the handle, sometimes I go a little bit off focus. I try not to go into the hole. Okay. Here we have, we have the trousers done. Good. Now I'm going to use the Gore Bunta again. Gore Bunta. And we are going to do the fur. Especially the fur is on the head. We'll remove it from here now to do this. It's easier when you have to do the top without the, especially if I want to be on camera. Okay, I do it here. This part there. I will put a little bit in the wall to make it even darker. Okay. Now I'm checking if I'm missing any part. He is not very hairy, this guy. This a little bit here on the arm. It's quite a shaved scaven. Because this look uh, like more scars than really four. Yeah, here we have like I don't know if this is hair or what is this representing. We have like a small pieces of hair here and there. These are the scars. Here we have a little bit of hair. Just look for it in, for the skin to see where you find hair and then you just do it. Okay. Next, I'm going to take Agarus Duns. This rope. As you can see I'm trying to do parts that are not connect to each other. So if I do the skin I don't do I try not to do parts that are touching the skin. If I do the clothes I try to do for example I have done the trousers so I'm trying to go for parts that are not touching the trousers because they are still wet. Can be that you have sometimes a small contact, you have to be careful because the contrast paints will flow one into each other. Okay. This is done. I still don't know what I have there. I have a, like a amalgam of things. So now I'm going to take the snake bite leather. Snake bite leather. I just need to find it first. Here it is. And I'm going to do this part here of the knife. Okay. 
Oops. Okay. And I will do these things here. So this looks like. To be fair, I don't know what this is representing. I think it's representing like a back. And then he have the helmet on top. And I will do as well, no, the clothes I will apply wire wood on the nails of the, of the here, okay, these nails of clothes, I will apply first wire wood, it will create a shade to do that later on, the highlights. And now I'm going to do the metallic parts. And I'm going to use iron breaker. This one. We'll block the one with this. And for example, we can start with something that we know that is completely dry. This is the sword. This is big knife. And we are going to apply this. Mainly, all the parts except this type of horn will go with this color now. The armor I will keep, I will leave it black. I will simulate that this painted in black, later on we are going to add some scratches if needed but now we are going to paint as well yeah, I don't know what these walls are this looks like more orbs, so I will not paint this here I make a mistake, I missed I will come back, I will just show you I will do it maybe off camera, but I will apply Agarus Dunes as well there, I missed this part. I thought that was a different thing. So here... Okay. These things I will do as well in Nagar's Dunes. Because I will paint these like horbs. I think these are the... Okay, now I see what is this. These are the smoke things, right? And I paint them like clay balls that are breaking when you throw them on the ground. So I will do the same for these ones. And I think as another one. This is metallic, this is like a smoke. Okay. Very clear now what this is. So yeah, I will do this as well. I guess sometimes it's not easy to know what you are seeing. And now I go back to metallics. As I said, I will paint as well this and all the metallic parts. So, I'm going to do all the metal parts and I'm back for the next step. Okay, this is the step we are now. And next, 
uh, you can see we have all the metallics and the blue and, and the blacks and we are going to apply now no the oil over all the metallics black and we try to avoid the skin of course and the fur so we'll apply it here on the blade to give a little bit of shade And especially I will apply it where we have black and blue. Okay. So we apply is to make the black look a little bit darker. Okay, this will be the starting point now for the highlights. So after this, we are going to start working on the highlights, and we are going to do the same on the blue. When the blue look much darker than what does like now, okay? When really have deep shades. So I'm going to do that on the trousers, on the cape, and once it has dry, I will be back for the next step. Okay, so next step, I'm going to finalize these things that you see there white. So I'm going to use skeleton hoard to do this. There is like a, I don't know what is this exactly, to be fair. So I will just apply here. I'm not clear what I'm painting here. If it's a horn, if it's a spike, I have no clue, to be fair. But I do this, at the end I decide to do this like ivory looking, and if it's not ivory, Sorry, but I don't know what is this. It's like this, looks like he has a helmet, but I don't know if it's a trophy helmet. It's quite confusing this part of the miniature. And now I will take Agarus Dunes, because there is like a rope, and I prefer to keep it in the same color as the other ropes. Okay. So Agarus Dunes. Our contest. I'm not too concerned. They are so close these two colors that I, if it's mixing a little bit, I'm not concerned. Okay. So, but to be fair, and this helmet is also a very weird thing that we have there. Try to avoid for the moment the metallic thing. Looks like a incense bearer or something like that. Because these are the the. The smoke bombs. Now I'm going to take Gorgunta. This is kind of cool. Okay, Gorgunta. And we are going to go these things. And we have all the base colors lock. We are ready to start doing the highlights, but I still have this thing there. Again, I think this. Ah, yeah, I know what is this. We have to do it in the same color. This is the bomb that he have launched. You see, that he has removed. Now I get what is this thing. Yeah, I'm. <laughs> I'm trying to understand when looking this miniature what is each part. Sometimes it's not clear eh, what you're looking, but now I realize these are the string that is holding the the one that he has launched, the one that we have on the ground. Okay, he has launched one of these spheres or orbs. These are full of his um, chemicals to make a smoke. It represented that he's using the smoke to hide himself. So I'm going to take again the Agarus Dunes. We are going to do this because he represents that he can remove one of them is the one that and it's just he's just pulling it out of the string of rope and throw it. Okay, so we paint, we paint it in the same color as the rope. I don't think we need to go for a specific color. There. Ready. Great. Let's start with the skin. 
So for the skin, I'm going to use the next colors. I'm going to use Bookman's Glow. I'll put a little bit more on my palette. I'm going to use Kislev Flash. And I will use Flight One Flash. This one I already have on my palette, it's a little bit dry. I will put more. A little bit. It's enough. Enough. No, but yeah. Prepare the colors, but I always forget. First, I want to do another thing that is to create a small shade to do the eyes, okay? So to do the eyes, I'm going to use this color Grift Charger Grey and I'm going to apply, apply this around the eyes is to make a bluish tone that will be will simulate the eyes back okay, I, I like to make it give a sensation of unhealthiness I think it's it's a very nice thing to put the shade on the on the face like that. Okay. I need to wait now that this device. So we are going to go now to paint the, the mouth. So to paint the mouth, I'm going to use first XV88. Where it is here it is. Okay, I'm going to use XV88 on the teeth. Mainly on the big teeth. Like that. You do it in the big frontal teeth. No need to do it on the small ones normally. Okay. Like that is enough. And now I'm going to use the flake one flace, the same color we are taking for this. And we are going to do the bottom or the top, the tips of the teeth. Like that. And I didn't wait that this device is proposed, so I can. It's mixing a little bit. And I have this yellowish tonality. And now, very carefully, I will do the small ones. of a mistake, no problem. I want to make this one as well. Okay. I, I need to wait at this device, so in the meantime I will take Boom and slow, and I will do the tongue. You can see. And I will do as well with Boom and that I see it here before I miss it. These postules. And I will check if there is any other postule that I can make with this color. Simple these ones. I will do as well, I will take the advantage I have it on my brush and I will do these scars. Perfect. Okay. So now this have dry. I'm going to use a very dark brown, Rhinos Height, dry bark, any dark brown that you have it. And with this dark brown, 
I'm going to follow like that the teeth so to make to, to really make this and I will come from the top and do the line that is separating the two teeth okay and here that I put too much white I will do similar thing so I'm taking this that round And I clean what I think I went too far with the white. Okay. You can make the same definition. Here. Good. Now we have this done and we can go back to the eyes. So for the eyes I will use first my fist on red. So this one. And we are going to paint the eyes. And you can see that I try to leave the greyish color that we have put to give the sensation this will give the sensation of madness unhealthiness And now I'm going to use yellow, flash with yellow, this one. And this is, and I will try to make a small dot like that. Thing like that is okay. This will give a nice expression. Now we can start working on the skin. So I will start with the flake bone flesh. With the color we have, the dark oat is very light. And I want to keep this is the skin of this war one very light on all of them. I think the light skin it's helping on this sensation of there they are in, in tunnels, they work in the shadows and they are escaped, right? They are by definition they are not healthy entities. So as you can see first I'm applying the flake one flesh. You see my arm crossing over is because I take and here I have clean water on my left hand. And I'm going there to moisture the brush quite often. I like to keep it moisture. So to avoid that I'm to be sure that I have the the you can see. Okay. Now it's a little bit too exaggerated. So what we are going to do now is I'm going to take K 
Kislev flesh that is the next tone a little bit more pinkish I'm going to apply it next to this some parts and I will start using as well Bookman's Glow very thin in small quantities just to help on the transitions. Now I take Kisler Flash and I mix it a little more of Kisler Flash and now we go back to Flag One Flash. keep the pale tonality here at the back of here I will apply kiss left then I will prepare I will take very little of Bungman's glow and put it there you can see and I keep all this very dark around the eye because it gives this sensation okay, of madness. Then what you want is to show the these are angry rats, right? You can see now. What is important to do when we are doing this? You can see that there is very visible gap of the two parts. So what I'm going to do to dissimulate that, I'm going to apply first. You can see very nicely the movement glow. And here at the at this part. I will apply um, Kislev Flesh. Okay, then Bookman's Glow as well on this part there. Okay, here at the bottom. We want to wait that this dries. So while this is drying, I can go to the other side where I have the same problem. And apply boob and flow quite nicely. The same we are going to do. It is quite tricky, but I will put Boomman's glow. This is the thing that you want to make more discreet. You want to put Boomman's glow there. You really want to kill this black slot there. We are going to use the paints, even if I go a little bit over the bell, later on I will correct the bell with black. Okay, but you can see when we have put the movement flow like that, it's not that visible anymore. Now I will take here Kislev Flash, I will start dragging movement flow with my brush full of Kislev Flesh so I keep I, I start spreading here I do the same then I will take a little bit of Bookman Glow I will do this more reddish and you can see how nicely we have now the skin tone The other thing we don't want to forget is on the pustles okay, I will come with flake one flesh and I will put a dot in the middle 
this will simulate the push. I lost one push too. Okay. I will find it later on if not. Okay, so here I want to add a little bit of even flake one flesh and here you want to it's very pinkish so I want to add a little bit more of kids life flesh. Okay, let's do the back. But it's going to be all the time the same now. Okay, we use Kisley Flesh to make now the musculature more visible. And here we have like a scar. So the scar, I want to keep it in the dark flesh tone, so I will do like that, I go around leaving the scar on Bookman's low and now again I will take a little bit of Bookman's glow, I will put it in the shade and I will take Gisle Flesh and allow that they mix a little bit next to the shade. So the trick is to have the paint a little bit moisture. And you can see after doing that that the gaps are much less visible or non visible. Okay, you can see now the gap there, it's completely hidden by the paint job. And the same will happen here, you can see. We only see now on there on the rope because we will need to touch the rope later on. But here I will insist a little bit more with the pinkish color. And then we just dissimulate that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to keep working on the rest of the skin. And as this is repetition, I will not, I will now do it off camera because we are going to keep doing the same, right? Playing with Bookman's Glow and Kiss Left Flesh and then doing the last highlight with um, Flake One Flesh. Okay. We are going to be playing with these three colors. We can see here, we can see a little bit still the slot. So I can put a little bit more of this Bookman's Glow to dissimulate it even more. And I will keep going. Okay. So I will keep painting the skin and I'm back once I'm done with the skin. Okay, so here I will finalize part one. Okay, we have done the skin, and um, in the part two we are going to do the highlights on the robes, on the on the clothes. Uh, we are going to do the highlights on other uh, details, and we are going to do the weapons. Okay, but here we have done the base, all the base colors, uh, all the contrast paints, and we have done the skin to the end. You can see who looks like, and you cannot see the gaps anymore. So the gaps are really um, very nice integrated and not visible anymore. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please give a like if you have liked it. Share if you think other people can be interested. And as usual, thanks a lot for watching and see you later. Bye.